Hi, my name is Karen Sherrill and I'm one of the consultants with, with NurseThink. And I wanted to take a couple minutes to explain to you one of our newest creations, which is the Clinical Judgment Plan for Care. We recognize that in many programs, uh, faculty really are challenged with how do I get my students to provide paperwork that really shows a deep level of understanding about patient care. Our traditional nursing care plans that we have students complete can be daunting for the students as well as faculty. They are usually very long, very detailed, and many times will require a student to simply copy information from the EHR or from their textbooks into the document. And it really is not a thinking process, but it, it really is more of a process of, of uh, regurgitation of information that they're reading. Many faculty and, and programs have gone to some modified pieces related to concept mapping and other avenues, but one of the things we're finding is that these are really not consciously forcing our students to think through the steps of clinical judgment, as we have seen recently come from National Council State Boards of Nursing. So this particular tool, which I'm going to guide you through, will help that process with your students. And you can certainly detail and fine tune that to the needs that you have and implement it according to what your students needs are and the level that they are at within the program. So the initial information, of course, is simply the demographics at the top of the page. The students could complete this the day of care, or if you're having your students pre-select, then certainly that could be completed as they're going in the day before or a few hours before their shift in order to collect that information. <clears throat> the two boxes in the center really has this, forces the student into not only look at what are some of those abnormal assessments that I'm finding as I'm researching my patient and caring for my patient, but also how does that fit with the collaborative plan of care? So for example, if a student sees within the EHR or while assessing and caring for the patient that day, that the patient has a problem with nutritional elimination, they can put those abnormal assessment findings here, but they also might put here things that are part of the medical plan of care, such as the fact that the patient is on a 1800 ADA diet, or the fact that the patient is receiving bowel care of choice in order to um, minimize the constipation issues they've been having. So those are things that can be included within this initial couple of paragraphs. We really looked at this holistically so that we're forcing our students to think about things such as health promotion, culture and spirituality, thinking about safety uh, with every single patient that they take care of, whether that be uh, pre-selecting the patient, whether that be during the plan of care that day, they really are focusing on each of these individual topics. The bottom of the first page mimics what we have within the Nurse Think, the notebook product, and it really forces that student into prioritizing care. But we wanted this to be an active evolving document. So this is going to be our students shift priorities at the very start of the shift. We also will have students re-evaluate the shift priorities at the end of the shift. If your students are spending an eight or a 12 hour day with patients, they're likely to see a change in their status. So it's important for students to continually be reassessing, reevaluating, and reprioritizing the care of that patient in order to really solidify their clinical judgment decision making. The second page of this document at the top, we want our students to document any pertinent vital signs and lab trends they've seen throughout the shift. So again, they're comparing start of the day to end of the day and really demonstrating the ability to watch for those trends that's occurring within their patient that would show status changes. The big box on the left, we're calling that the mid-shift per purposeful clinical judgment. And we want to take our students through consciously uh, thinking about each of these six steps of the clinical judgment measurement model and making sure that they are really analyzing what's going on with their patient. This document, although these boxes look small, it is fillable. Students can click on this, type what they need, and the boxes will extend as they continue to use the document. So it makes it very useful for the students. The box on the right-hand side, which is our clinical debriefing, students are gonna be answering two questions at the end of their day. First of all, they wanna compare the care of this patient that they had that day 
in the clinical setting, compare it to maybe a patient that they've taken care of previously. What was the same? What was different? Maybe this is a, a client who's experienced a stroke. They want to think about, okay, I had a patient that I took care of uh, with a stroke, maybe in the nursing home as a first semester student. And that was a chronic situation, whereas this patient in the acute setting was very different because I could see that their uh, physical needs were changing throughout the day and it was more of an acute situation. So that could be a comparison analogy that those, the student is making as part of their clinical debriefing. The second question has the students comparing this case, this patient with their textbook or with a nurse think notebook. They will have the ability to go to their single page they've completed within the notebook on stroke and they will compare what I learned in lecture, what I learned in class, what I read in the textbook and compare it to this patient in this clinical setting today, recognizing that some things will be the same, but many things will be different as well. We want students to think at that higher level of compare and contrast and attribute what happened today, how do I connect that to my theory learning, and that really is going to uh, raise that level of understanding that much higher within the student. The bottom portion of this plan for care is our end of shift priorities. Some of these may be the same as the start of the shift, but some of these may be different. We really want our students to think analytically about what has changed. What has changed throughout my shift today? What are some things that I could have done differently? How could my priorities have changed and adjusted based upon the patient's changing status? The other things that we offer you <coughs> is the need for medication lists. And although we would love to get away from these, I think many programs still feel it's important for students to be very prepared with all their medications. Traditional medication lists that are used in clinical are a student's ability to regurgitate information out of their book or out of their electronic resource. This tool is designed a little differently, and it, what we're wanting students to do is, first of all, in that left column, not only learn generic trade classification so they can become more familiar with different medications, but they also need to identify if the dose is safe. Now, we're not asking them safe dose range. We're not asking them uh, dose dependent upon the patient's condition. We simply want our student to do the research on every medication. Is it safe or is it not safe for this patient? And that can encompass many different things. Uh, it, is there something contraindicated why this patient should not be receiving it, such as their potassium levels low and this is a diuretic that I'm delivering? Students will need to be performing that research but they're simply going to complete this as, is it safe or not, yes or no. Then we're going to have our, our students individualize this to each of the clients they're caring for. Why is this particular patient taking the medicine? And then we want them to think at a higher level. So the next question is, how will the nurse know if there's a problem or if the client's not tolerating the medication? So this is really part of that analytical piece. It's not just naming the, um, you know, the, the half-life of the drug, but it's getting the nurse to think from a practical, I'm standing at the bedside, how is it I'm going to determine whether or not this is the client's having a problem or if they're not tolerating it. The next box has the student looking at how will they the, you know if the medication's effective. And this is really important in the process of evaluating outcomes. How do they know whether or not they have met an appropriate criteria for this medication? So um, the last piece, of course, patient family education, so very, very important. But those are the components within this document that we're having our students look at. <clears throat> the last piece that we put together was a grading rubric. And some programs grade their plans for care or their nursing care plans or their concept maps. Other programs don't. But we wanted to have this resource available if, in fact, your program does uh, in fact, grade these. Uh, we have several different uh, criteria for grading across the top. You may be in a program that uses pass-fail. You may be in a program that has a letter grade. Uh, whatever, whichever ones of these best meets your school is the one that you're going to be selecting as your particular criteria. The second box that we have, the second section, 
gives you the ability to weight each of these areas. So for example, if your program decides that a student's um, recording of vital sign and lab trends is not as important to us as our students' ability to prioritize start a shift and end a shift priorities for their patient, you can weight these differently. So let's say this total activity was worth 100 points. I could assign a weight for vital signs and pertinent lab trends as 10% of this grade, whereas start a shift and end of shift priorities could maybe be 30% of the grade each. So you have the ability to make this into a weighted document and look at each of these sections individually rather than just putting one blanket amount of, yes, if they get it completed correctly and, and to the best of their ability, they get a perfect score. And if they leave out some boxes, they get a zero. Uh, this would really give you the ability to individualize it to whatever you feel is most important. Then what we did with the rubric is we simply had criteria for each of those big box sections. So nursing medical plan of care, does the student exceed, meet, minimally meet, or does not meet the standards? We wrote in there some specific criteria for each of those. So it gives you the ability to grade this document with your students based upon the rubric. This particular document is also fillable, so if you needed to change some terminology, tweak or adjust it, you're more than able to do that. The last piece I wanted to show you briefly, we do have an example of a completed plan for care. This can be really helpful for you, your faculty, as well as your students as they're learning this process. It will give them the ability to uh, look at how this person completed the plan for care and how they might do a better or different job in what it is that they're including. So I hope this video was helpful to you and I hope you enjoy using the Clinical Judgment Plan for Care.